Before free agency and before the draft, we need to talk. Welcome back, everybody, to episode three of Night of the Shield here in 2023. I'd like to start off by thanking everybody who participated in the comment section on the last video. I truly do appreciate all the support. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the subs. And I want to continue that moving forward. So please, if this is your first time here or you're not yet a subscriber of Night of the Shield, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, so you can be updated every time I drop another episode. And hit that like button. Let's continue to move up the algorithm. All right. As I started off the program to say, before free agency, before the draft, before we worry about who's staying, who's going, right? Who's, who's going to be picked with that number seventh overall pick? It may all be irrelevant, right? I mean, let, let's take a look about what we've been dealing with in the past 20 years. 20 years, the last time we were in the Super Bowl. Al Davis, the man, the myth, the legend. Love the man. Did a lot of great things. He's the heart and soul of what the Raiders stand for, right? Now, anybody in my age group, that's been around since like the 80s, let's say. Let's go ahead and say the 80s, to be fair. Most of y'all said what I thought, and we all used to talk back in the day, even at O.co in the early 90s, mid-90s to be exact, from 95, right? We all used to sit there and talk about this organization is not going to change its ways until Al's gone. We all said it at one point in time, fact. Does that mean that Al Davis was horrible? No, not necessarily. He got old, right? But it's funny because now his son's in charge and his son has been in charge for the past 11 going on 12 years. And let, let's be honest, like he's not his father. But the funny thing to me is his father never taught him anything. Didn't teach him football. What did Al really expect this organization was going to go when he was gone? It's crazy to me. I know if I was Al, I would have, my son would have been on my right hand side. I, I would have been talking to him about everything. And look, maybe that wasn't Mark's 100% full interest, or maybe, maybe Al had different plans for Mark. Maybe he wanted Mark to be more of the business man or whatever. <laughs> Whatever, Mark. Maybe the P.F. Chang man, as everybody likes to say, right? Maybe, maybe Al just knew that this, this, this kid's not cut out to do what I do. Doesn't mean he's not cut out to be an owner. It just means he's not cut out to be a football guy, an analyst, a scout, a coach, obviously. But even Al in his old age lost it a bit. Too old, wouldn't get out of his own way. Just wouldn't. His prerogative, his team, his organization that he built, his prerogative, man. So now, now we're, we're here with, with Mark, and Mark's just learning. Mark's just trying to grow. And that's my biggest question today. Has, has Mark Davis grown? And I can guarantee you from the comment sections I've been reading and, and other videos that I've watched and Twitter and all that jazz, most of you think he has not. And... To a certain degree, I have to agree. But there, there's a few things that I, that I think that, that we just don't know yet, in all honesty. Because if we're going to sit here and say that for the past 20, and it's been 20 plus in my opinion, 20 years, this organization has been dysfunctional. It's been dysfunctional from a head coaching standpoint. It's been dysfunctional from a drafting standpoint. We used to overpay in free agency. When, when Reggie was brought in, and I'll reiterate again, I've said this so many dang times, that was a, a predetermined decision not made by Mark, just for the record. But brought in Reggie, and for the record, people know that I've been here for a while. I used, I used to support Reggie like no other because I felt like he was going to bring something different. I believe that he was trying to change the front office, and I do believe that he was. I really believe that he was, and that takes time. Mark just came out this year. Rome wasn't built in the day. Fact. 
And I think, and I'm not even saying Reggie was going to be successful, but there's a reason why Reggie hired Dennis Allen. Does everybody forget? Nobody wanted to coach this football team. Nobody. Mark met with Jack Del Rio. He got Jack Del Rio to agree to coach this football team. Mark Davis came to Reggie and told Reggie Jack Del Rio was going to be the head coach of this football team. Not Mark's first choice. It wasn't even on Reggie's radar. He had to convince, if that's even the, even the real deal, told however you want to look at it. And for all those who remember the timeline, Mark had to go meet with Jack one-on-one, and, and they had, basically they were just trying to fill each other out about what, what their vision was, and what was going to happen moving forward, right? And that the first chance that Mark had to replace Jack Del Rio with his first pick, John Gruden, he made the move. And, and that, that wasn't even the, the cusp of it all, man. That, we're, we are talking about John Gruden came in to be a Bill Parcells slash Bill Belichick type figure in this organization, meaning he was going to hold the key to everything. He kept Reggie around for one year to get through that first part of the season, get the draft and all that out of the way, and then Reggie got his papers, right? By next year, Reggie was gone. Along comes Mike Mayock, a guy brought in just to help Gruden scout. Let's be real, okay? Mike Mayock did not come here to play GM. He had the title, but he wasn't calling any of the shots. So what does that, what does that truly mean? I, I wish I had the answer. <laughs> but John was booted out. It wasn't Mark's choice to have him leave. I'm not even going to get into that because at this point, I honestly don't care. I don't believe John is as bad as he's made out to be but where there's smoke, there's fire. That's all I'm saying. John has proven to be a bit egotistical. Like I said in the last episode, we all to a certain degree are. We all have to carry a certain amount of confidence and belief in ourselves that what we say we truly believe. I end up here BSing you. I'll tell you that right now. I I truly believe pretty much everything that's coming out of my mouth. And I also am humble and smart enough to know that I'm going to be off the mark. On most of the stuff, no pun intended, I'll be off the mark on a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about just because you don't know. The difference between me and I think other creators, and this is, trust me, this is not a, (laughs) this is more of a a knock on myself to a certain degree, is I, as a legally blind man, have to process information different than other people, naturally, by default. Not by choice, but by default. Now, I could easily go and watch 100 videos, watch NFL Network from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, turn on ESPN, do whatever, and and try to make my opinion and find someone that says, well, I believe with most of what he says, and that's the opinion, and that's what I'm going to roll with. But I choose to process all sorts of different type of information. Uh, I use voiceover on my computers. It reads out to me articles that I read, and then I just kind of process it. like Because this is what I've learned in life when it comes to like business, big corporations, things that you may like, whether it's a, a movie genre, uh, theme park dramas, uh, you know, sports, sports in particular. There's an entertainment value to all of this, right? There's the press conferences. Oh, you got to go speak to the media. These guys are trained. I promise you, I promise you, you could interview me as if I was a quarterback or the star player of any football team and I could answer the questions without telling the truth. It's so easy. If you watch a lot of the pressers and everything, it's, it's, a lot of the stuff is regurgitated, repeated over and over and over. This team is dysfunctional. This team has been dysfunctional. So when you have all these Derek Carr people coming out and just being upset and just saying, McDaniel sucks, get him out of here, he was the problem, or Dave Ziegler, he doesn't know how to draft, he, he did a horrible job in free agency, or Mark Davis is a joke, he just rides around in minivans or mini coopers and eats P.F. Chang's and 
hangs out with Circus Soleil stars. It's like, look, there's truth to all of that. But I guarantee you there's a ton more to this. Look around the league. 32 teams in the NFL. Only two of them are going to have a shot to be in the big game. Right? You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't think Miami just, just got lucky? No. Miami's been a much better ran organization than the Raiders, though. Fact. How did New York turn it around so quick? Because it's been a better ran organization for a longer period of time than the Raiders have. Why does a guy like Mike Tomlin get a lot of slack for finally having a losing season, not making the playoffs? Why are the Steelers always so dang good? Because they're a well-ran organization and have been the whole time. I can keep going. Cowboys, Niners, all your usual suspects, right? Whether they win Super Bowls or not. And yes, fact, one of the reasons Derek Carr has failed from a win-loss perspective, you could put on our poor defense. Horrible. And we'll definitely be getting into that as we start looking ahead at free agency, like hardcore free agency videos, uh, what's the needs on either side of the football. All that will be discussed. But it's all for naught if we don't really figure out how to become an organization that is a well-oiled machine. All that long-winded talk just to really come down to this. Mark Davis, right, even though he fell out of the John Gruden sweepstakes once the, the emails came out, even though that was pulled from him and taken from him, because he would not have given up on John at that point. And John may or may not have been on, on to something, Right? We don't know, and we'll never know. But every decision that Mark has made, even though it doesn't feel like it all the time, or uh, look at it, I, I, I see progression. And just because I see progression, you know, everybody's going to fire. Look, I'm not even talking about the decisions he's making by kicking fans that spend $600 on tickets out of the stadium. That's a whole different conversation. I'm not worried about that element right now. I'm talking about what's on the field. And the reason why is because there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing that we can do is stop going to the games ourselves. But we're fans. We, we get excited. And no matter how mad we get, if the product becomes good, we will pay. We would want to go. We want to be there. We want to be a part of the experience. Fact. But I felt like Jack Del Rio was an upgrade from Dennis Allen. I do believe that. The question of moving on from Jack to John can be questionable in, in some people's eyes. For me, I'm, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a bit excited in the hopes, the same way that Mark had hope, that John was going to bring us back to the 90s, the late 90s, early 20s. Like, this, this could happen again. Could John repeat himself? and build a team that can compete. It wasn't happening fast enough for us. I, I wasn't fully satisfied. And honestly, I don't miss John Gruden. I just don't. I think he became a bit egotistical. So the question really becomes, at this point in time, did Mark make the right decision with Dave and Josh did he? Leave a comment in the comment section. You let me know. And I already know what most of the answers are going to be. No. Josh McDaniels is horrible. Like, it's not all play calling, guys. Come on. There's too many great offensive numbers. Some of it's execution, too. Now, am I saying that Josh called perf perfect games? 100% not. You can watch the games and see that he had faults. But so does every coach. Like, sometimes especially as Raider fans, we're so caught up in the fact that we've been bad for so many years, we're just used to it. And some, there has to be someone to blame. You pick and choose. Was it Derek Carr's fault? 100%. Was it Josh McDaniel's fault? 100%. Was it Dave Ziegler's fault? I'll give him 50%. Is it Mark Davis's fault? 110%. He's the owner. 
It is his responsibility not only to make us money, but to make the decisions that are going to turn this team around. And I've watched the videos. I've read the tweets. I've read some articles of how Mark Davis is in, in historically though, even before Mark, this organization was dysfunctional and headed down the wrong path year in and year out. Horrible in drafts. We had to overpay free agents to come and play for us. Even the, even the players that wanted to put on the silver and black, they were gonna, they're not, they're not going to turn down the money. We've been historically dysfunctional for a very long time. Some of it by choice and some of it by league manipulation, but that league manipulation was there because we're rebels. That's what we are. That's that we're <laughs> we're Mavericks. Al Davis didn't like that. If you remember that video, he's like, I don't know if I'm a Maverick, but I mean that that was his persona. He went against the grain. It's part of the mystique of the Raiders. But I've said this many times before. We have to change that that look. We have to change that point of view if we're gonna change. Period. We can't always be the dirt kickers. We can't keep stirring up dust everywhere we go and expect to be respected like that. It's a whole different world we live in. To get respect, you got to earn respect. And I totally get where Mark is going. And yeah, he's trying to tap in to a bit of patriot, uh, the patriot way and, and hoping that that they could come in and at least get this organization to be a well-oiled machine because this all starts from decisions in the front office all the way down, good drafts, good free agency, and good coaching. But I'm going to be strictly honest. Just as you look at it, as it's laid out in front of you in your face, this team did not have a good season. Duh. It was horrible. Horrible. So many blown leads. We saw some good things and we saw a lot of bad things and it added up to be trash. But if we're going to say and put Mark on the top of the food chain, which is fact, and that this organization has been dysfunctional even before he took over the team, remember that. A guy that openly admits that he has no clue about running a football team, being a football guy. He has grown some. And he's trying to put people in places to make a difference. Now, it's way too early. If we're that dysfunctional, which I believe we've been, that's a fact. For at least 20 years, this team has been dysfunctional, big time. I'll, I will reiterate Mark's statement. Rome wasn't built in a day. We were thinking about this offense. We were thinking about this season. We were, you know, Mark never came out. Like all the Super Bowl talk, come on. Come on, let's, let's live in reality. It's always a possibility, but I never felt that way. Not even before the season started. I wasn't thinking Super Bowl. I'd be lying if I wasn't thinking playoffs, but he is trying, trying, keyword, to put pieces in place to create a consistency in the way that we function as a football team, the way that everybody else has. And I, I'm going to be honest, I, I haven't been happy with all of Mark Davis's choices at all. And until we actually see a, a, a an, uh, result to an, in, our, in, our, in the investment of the Raiders, as far as this, this GM, this coach, these players, playoffs, playoff wins, et cetera, None of us are going to change our mind on how we feel about this organization and how it's being ran by its owner, Mark Davis. And I'm not here to tell you to support Mark. I'm not here to tell you to support Dave or Josh. But I've learned from doing this since 2012, at least putting my opinion out on videos and, and, and coming out, regardless of how inconsistent it's, <laughs> inconsistent it's been, I've made so many mistakes by jumping the gun without letting it all play out. And my synopsis at, at looking at this, this whole year and seeing all the moving pieces and all the things that don't work leads me to believe, just like we all have said, dysfunctional franchise. 
dysfunctional franchise. Whether or not Josh or Dave is the answer, Rome wasn't built in the day. They can't change it over that fast. You can't rotate players in and out in one offseason, not even knowing the full staff or how it looked when you got here. But I tell you this, I will tell you this, they have to prove something this year. They have to prove something. There's been enough pieces, especially offensively. I'm not going to get into offensive defense right now. But there's even been some bright spots on defense that just weren't ta- – there's not enough supporting cast, right? Honestly, I can only pick out one name, one name that actually is a, a, a cornerstone or a centerpiece or the main part, and that's Max. Outside of Max, there's nothing on that defense – that we absolutely would have to bring back. But there was a lot of young talent that had opportunity last year that have an opportunity to grow, and you get your most growth in between year one and one two. So between year one and two, these guys might come out and be something. We'll have, let's let it, you know, I'm not, I've caught, I've caught myself in, a, in traps before because, again, I'll reiterate, I used to be big on Ray. Oh, Reggie's going to do this. Give Reggie time. He had to do this. And, I ain't doing that with this. I'm not, it's not where I'm going with this. Mark Davis has a lot to prove. Dave has a lot to prove. And Josh has a lot to prove. And after one season of implementing this whole new, I mean, presidents, scouts, uh, culture, all the stuff that they're talking about, I think that was the main conversation when he hired these gentlemen was not necessarily to come in here and win a Super Bowl in year one. Maybe by year three or be contenders it was about turning this organization around from top to bottom. Implementing a culture from top to bottom that can sustain the test of time so we always can be good and stop being dysfunctional. Stop coach after coach and, and, and players after players and money, money problems and, and all the negativity that's been surrounding the Raiders for decades. I know I'm tired of it, and, then I, and I know you're all tired of it too. We live in the moment, and our moments have been far and few between. Horrible. Horrible. Is the future bright? If you've been a Raider fan long enough, it could only be bright. Like, we've been in the dark for so long. Like, all I, all I see is light. Now, how far away that light is, I don't know. I'm blind. <laughs> this could be my excuse. I'm blind. I'm just as mad and frustrated as everybody else is. I'm, I'm upset. I'm tired of it. I get emotional too, man. It, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel okay. But at the same time, we got we to gotta let this play out. Maybe it'll work. We don't know. But is it another gamble? Yeah, I, I was watching the one video, and I, I apologize for not remembering the cat's name. Uh, cat's name. I want to say it was, it might have been Royal Sap. Anybody watch that guy's video? I mean, he did a great job of breaking down coaches and winning percentages and all that good jazz. And we do hire coaches that don't have winning records. If you keep hiring these, I get it. I get where he's going with it. And, and I can't disagree with the man. But what I can disagree with is how do you land a coach like that when you're this dysfunctional? without overpaying, without giving someone $10 million guaranteed for 10 years and lose them to controversy. It's crazy. It starts with Mark. And Mark, if you ever watch his video, which maybe, maybe someone in your organization will, maybe, maybe they let you know that someone's saying this stuff or whatever. Look, man, it ain't easy. But at some point, you have to implement yourself. You have to learn the game of football, both business side and on the field, and really hold these guys accountable for the bad decisions they make, period. And if you forced your opinion too hard, too early, that will be on you, man. Do your homework. Not much else I could say about it. Now, I want to give my one final thought before I get out of here on this subject. I felt last year's draft did well. Wasn't the best. You know, they came in, they're just grabbing pieces. I know we grabbed two running backs, 
But let's face it, they didn't pick up Jacob's fifth year option. They didn't they they were just playing the game. They gave DC a contract that gave themselves a way out. They shot themselves in the foot at the same time, but neither here I'm sure they don't care. I promise you at this point they don't care about the draft picks. They want them. They want them. But if they don't get them, as long as they save the money and can reinvest and have a plan moving forward, and that, we'll have to let that all play out. But they got two running backs because they were drafting for the future. So now when we sign Jacobs or we franchise tag him, whatever we do, we're going to have quite the running back backfield. Like we're going to be good, right? You see the potential in Zeus. We haven't seen Britton Brown enough. We saw it in preseason. He's talented. Amadula has been a spark on third down in the kick and return game. Like, they, they did some things. They did some things that I could look at and see, all right, I see a little bit. But it doesn't matter what they necessarily do and how lucky they get and where. They got to invest defense. That's what we're going to get into that. Now that I got all this off my chest, we're definitely going to start getting into that. But winning cures all, gentlemen. So there's only one else thing to do. Just win, baby. Period. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Please hit that like button on your way out. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, so you can be updated every time I drop another video. And until next time, y'all stay Raider strong. Night out.